Yeah, well, I think uh, I, I think now the, the Jaguar Land Rover story is actually quite well known. It's, uh, you know, we had a situation whereby, effectively, over the past five years, sales have doubled, which is excellent. It's a, a step in, you know, a good step in the right direction. Um, I think it's people know we're investing a hell of a lot in terms of uh, product investment, frankly. Um, so this year, uh, in fact, we closed off our, our our business year yesterday. I'm still waiting for some of the results myself at the moment, but but we're still shy. We're still shy of half a million. Um, I think. You know, we should and must be quite confident for the first time ever in the, the next 12 month period we'll go over half a million cars because there's brand new cars coming out in segments that we've not competed before. Um, Jaguar XC is a great example of that, frankly. But even with vehicles like Discovery Sport, that already is a huge success story. Really huge success. So, so, you know, we're on a good glide path towards a very different place, but still trying to make sure that we're premium. We're not as big as a German 3. We don't intend to be as big as a big German 3, but certainly we can close the gap. I don't expect to be 25% the size of them either. You know, we've got to grow our business and close the gap because that's our competition. The two brands are clearly in very different places. You know, I mean, Jaguar is a challenger brand. Um, and as you just heard out there at the press conference, you know, over the next 12 months we've got three brand new Jaguars. And uh, not face this, three brand new Jaguars. State of the art, and we've got XF here. XF, in terms of all the metrics, is best in class. Period. No dispute, you know. Lowest CO2, fantastic fuel economy, uh, shadowed down. Better interior space, you know, really performance car. So, XF's the replacement car, as we know now, XC, which is shortly going to get in launch mode from, from June onwards, is a car that we conquest a lot of business from, aimed at 3 Series, aimed at C-Class Mercedes. And then, I guess, a real global car uh, coming in the first half of next year with the F-Pace. So, three cars in such a short period of time means that Jaguar will still be a challenger brand, but, but the volume should increase exponentially from where we are. It has to, because two of those cars are into segments that we don't exist at the moment, F-Pace and XC. And actually ones that are really global segments. You know, I mean, there's, there's aspects of the sedan segments you know, on a world stage where not every market has got a big XF segment, for example. Everyone, for sure, has got a big crossover segment and growing. And everyone, for sure, has got a lot of uh, spots of answer. So, so you know, we expect on the Jaguar side that those three vehicles uh, will start to exponentially and have a multiplier effect on the volume. On the Land Rover side, you know, I think people have seen the fact that, you know, people know the fact that we've got these three legs to the Land Rover brand. And uh, they've seen over recent years the big investment in the luxury, you know, leg, the, the Range Rover leg. Um, and even today with the SV autobiography, that, you know, the most expensive, most powerful Range Rover ever. Which, you know, I think in your market, you can almost aim that vehicle, you know, at your market, frankly. It's absolutely made for it without a shadow of doubt. It's, uh, it's where I would expect a large percentage of vehicles to go, almost a majority, but a large percentage of vehicles to go. Um, we're now scoping out in detail the Discovery leg, which is a leisure leg, if you like, in Land Rover. And Discovery Sport already, I'd say, has been a huge success. Frankly. Um, but our overall intention on Land Rover, as opposed to Jaguar being a challenger brand, you know, Land Rover is the real deal. That's the original, authentic SUV brand. You know. That is the number one brand in the world in terms of SUVs. And, you know, we don't have to be the biggest volume to be number one. We are number one. The, the volume of Jeep is the, is the biggest competition of Land Rover in all world terms. But from a Range Rover perspective, you know, I, I think in, in many ways, if there's more focus on the upper end of the SUV segment, that cannot do us any harm, you know. And I think, you know, our engineers are confident, and with the investment we put, we put into the products, I'd say, come on down, because, you know, there's nobody who's going to take Range Rover's crown in that segment. We're just not going to let it happen. Um, I'm sure they'll produce a, a really good car, you know, they've got big Volkswagen investment behind them. Um, but anybody would be foolish if they think after 45 years Range Rover won't remain number one. We can promise that it will. We'll do everything to make sure it remains number one, actually. Uh,
what we're trying to do, um, you know, the show about this would be very straightforward. There's very seldom a car show that we go to in there where we're not previewing or showing something for the first time. And, and uh, that's not an exaggeration. I mean, that, that, that's the truth. You know, that's, that's what we're doing all the way down the line. And, and what we want to do is make sure that people are focused on what we're launching at that moment in time. So this show for us is very much about the Jaguar XF. It's very much about you know, the SV Autobiography Range Rover. We've got XC on the stand. That's not been shown in Europe before. We've almost taken that for granted now, frankly. Um, although the car's not launched here until, until next year. Um, on the Land Rover side, moving forward, you know, what we can say is that you know, we, we invest in 3.5 to 4 billion sterling a year on company and other technologies. Um, we, you, know, you can see the strategy. You can see the Range Rover leg, the Discovery leg, and the Defender leg. I guess what we've got to do quite soon now is start shooting people the scope of the Defender leg. That will be the next piece of action. Because it makes sense, you know, but people, until they see the products, you know, will not quite get what we're doing there. But I can promise you, anything we do with Defender will be a real Defender. You know, we've put a lot of investment into this new engine uh, plant uh, in Wolverhampton, and that will produce you know, low CO2 petrol and diesel engines. The first one is the diesel one. You know, it's 104 grams per kilometre, this particular car. 99 on, on XC as well. Um, and yeah, you're right, we, we've got that V6 engine there and we've got the, the V6 diesel engine there as well. But in a very short period of time, you know, the Ingenium will be a range of engines. And they'll be, they'll be low CO2, but they'll also be strong performance. What might say it, very high performance. So, so it's a, just a question of being sensible on which we launch with first, but there'll be a cadence of launching with the engines that, that actually um, is quite rapid. Yeah, we've got big ambitions with our car, but it's a big segment. You know, BMW is up 360,000 five series a year. So, you know, it's a big segment, and we're not getting enough of that big segment at the moment. We've got a lot to do with it. And, and I would say, if, you know, there's lots of big markets China, US, Europe, Huge. The, East, you know, the big markets. So, so I mean, you know, that, that has been the global car for Jaguar so far. I would have a lot of high hopes for this one, especially with you know, XC and XF together. It starts to make sense even in the corporate market as well. We're making Jaguar relevant. There may be a period of time where Jaguar didn't have as much relevance, but what's happened over the past five years, Jaguar's got to go to the back. It's a performance brand. That's what Jaguar is all about, performance. You know? And we're building it up, we're dialing that performance for well. F-Type was so important because F-Type really allowed us to do all these other vehicles. It becomes credible for people, actually. Well, nobody wants to drive boring cars, do they? Nobody wants their car to be perceived as a boring car. You know, there's some, some car brands, you know, they'll come about who they are, who would love to be considered, you know, with a sporting heritage. We've got them. So it's really important that, that we cling on to that and make sure that people understand where Jaguar came from originally. Now, that you know, there, there are other vehicles there, and there are other, you know, I mean, with, with XF and XJ. And, and even actually with XC, we can, in those segments, also dial up the luxury market without a shadow of doubt. You can have, have a broad church there. But yeah, the start of it is, you know, it's a performance car company, it always was. I mean, originally, the company was set up, or the, or the first 120 was, it was there to put a body around the engine. It was the performance engine that was a big deal in the first place, back, you know, all those years ago with some William Lyons. So that's what we are at the end of the day. I would say to you, if there's a car manufacturer at this show who tells you they're not working on electric cars, they're not telling you the truth. Okay, because, you know, there's, here we are in the States, we know what Californian legislation is like as an example. All of us are working on several solutions. More efficient gasoline, more efficient diesel, um, hybrid vehicles, and electrification. Everybody but everybody, I'm sure, I don't know this for sure, is, is working on that. I can't say that's guaranteed. So, you can imagine, so are we. Right? Now, we don't get anything to announce yet, but we'd be stupid if we weren't looking at all the options and working intensively on all areas. We clearly are. But, but for now, 
you know, we've come to another show, we've launched another two brand new cars. In the fullness of time, you know, there'll be lots and lots of things to talk about, actually. Uh, it's an interesting development, actually. Um, yeah, I think you hear from Nick Rogers, you know, we'll see more change in the next 10 years than we've seen the previous 50, without the show down. Um, and the engineers, normally in the automotive world, they come up with good solutions. Um, we've got to make sure at the same time they're exciting. We, we, we don't do 8-speed motion, we've got to do more than 8-speed motion. 